in the group chat, which is very, very valid. And um, also, I'd just like to add some clarity on this. Now, if you don't fit the category for deportation, someone asked, how can you qualify for impact of life? Now, and that was from Sister Hermina, I believe. If you missed this in the beginning, let me just explain this. I'm mixed race. My mother is white British. She was, she was, um, I was born in this country in England. I've never lived in any other nation and I've never owned any other passport or nationality up until um, in August this year. I've always been British due to my mother's. Um, and in, in the UK, you are whatever your mom is based on nationality, right? So my mom's British, I'm British. Now, I say that to say, um, how did I qualify for compensation? Because I got £20,000 compensation last year due to this scheme. You qualify, and even the government website says this, even the government website makes it very, very clear that you do not have to qualify for deportation and immigration in order to be successful for the compensation scheme. The compensation scheme, as I was saying when my battery died, apologies for that, there's three categories in the application that you can qualify under. That means once you fit the initial eligibility criteria, such as being a person from um, a, a, a Commonwealth, a British Commonwealth nation that arrived in the UK before the 1st of January 1973. If you arrived here, then number one, you're eligible. If your parents or grandparents or other close family, significant close family member arrived before then, you are also eligible. That is the number one criteria, period. If you don't meet one of those criteria, you're not going to be eligible for the compensation. If you, however, meet one of the criteria, of either being a person or being the child or close family member of the person who arrived in the UK before the 1st of January 1973 from a British Commonwealth nation, you then go on to then go to the next criteria, which is to meet either one or all of or any of these other three criteria. Number one is deportation and immigration. Now, a lot of people who come before the 1st of January 1973 will say, oh, I don't meet that criteria because I got nationalised or neutralised or I got my British passport. The fact you've got nationalised or neutralised means that you are eligible for that port. Nationalisation or neutralisation, it's the same thing. People call it different things. But anyway, um, if you, the fact that you had to go through that process means that you, you are eligible under that category because you never should have had to be nationalised or neutralised. You were born British subjects. You were born British. That means that you should have already had equal rights to British society without the naturalising or neutralisation process. And at the time, they gave people a deadline and said that you need to pay for, or some, some people got naturalised for free. Well, you need to do this process before a certain day, otherwise you're going to lose your right to be in the UK or work in the UK or live in the UK or access the NHS, right? Now, you were already British subjects, meaning you should, never should have had to gone through that. Now, other people have been deported or been threatened with deportation. Some people never got any of that, but they got a letter from the Home Office saying that you need to prove your right to be in the UK. Some people got BRP cards, the buy your residency permanency card from the Home Office, the Home Office ID card. If you got that card, you qualify under immigration and deportation. You never should have got that card because that card is for non British nationals, you were born as a British national if you entered the UK before 1973. If you never entered the UK from before 1973 and you were born British like me, or you're mixed race like me, you still qualify if your parents entered the UK before the 1st of, the 1st of January 1973. Now, one of the videos that I was trying to criticise my event claims that you have to qualify for deportation and immigration in order to be successful for the form. That is entirely untrue. Please have a look on the government website and you will see that the government themselves have written that. So is that person correct in the video or are the government correct about their scheme that they've put on themselves? Now, to answer the question, how do we qualify? We qualify as a close family member to someone who arrived then and due to the trauma that they've experienced due to the um, the scandal, it's affected them mentally, emotionally, or gave them trauma or whatever, as it did many of our family members. Um, 
if we were parented by traumatized parents, that obviously has an impact on our lives. Now, as I said at the beginning of this, you can't just write anything on the form and expect to be awarded compensation. It's not going to work. Whatever you write, you have to evidence. Now, as I shared a personal example earlier, I was in foster care as a child. Obviously, that relates back to the parenting that I received as a child. Had my father not had the Windrush scandal experience, he probably would have been a better, a better uh, father and more stronger. So, so whatever you write, Right. you have to evidence now have you uh, examples that you can use health have you ever had um, mental health issues has that ever been recorded at the hospital or with the doctors have you ever been detained have you ever received medication counseling or any form of therapy for any trauma that you've been to does that trauma relate to the way you were parented or the absent parents in your life um, does that relate to having to grow up with maternal deprivation, growing up without your mother because she left you in your home nation. Um, and while she was promised a better life, it was a form of manipulation that they gave our mothers and grandmothers, welcoming you to a better life. And when you got here, it was a much worse life. Um, however, being left alone in early childhood um, can give children maternal deprivation, meaning that they're deprived of the maternal um, maternal connection to their mother that then forms attachment issues some of you were grew up grew up without your mother or father you then have struggled to form um, and maintain positive relationships in your life with your sibling group with your other family members with partners with the other parent of your um, with the other parent to the other parent of your child child so your baby mother your baby father your ex-wife your ex-husband some of you have had those problems in relationships and um that is likely to, to be due to attachment disorder that stems from early childhood and being um um uh, being separated from your main caregiver being abandoned or being rejected um um people have uh, people suffer from loneliness due to isolation because if you've got attachment disorder or you've been abandoned or rejection re rejected in early childhood you can isolate yourself as a protective factor to protect yourself from um, 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 formulating close bonds to people and people do that as a false perception of a protective factor but actually isolating yourself can lead to loneliness which can lead to mental health issues many people in our community are suffering from that there's other examples um, many of our uh, our parents and grandparents that entered the UK before the 1st of January 1973 were denied access to housing. Many of you may not even realise this and, uh, uh, and would have had to have grown up in your mum's friend's front room on the floor. All of you, your mum, your dad and your two siblings and you would have slept in your um, um, parents' friend's house or parents' cousin's house uh, for some time until your parents worked up to 80 hours a week, two factory jobs in order to buy somewhere or rent somewhere for you lot to live in. And even at that point, it would have been a one bedroom flat for you for you all. Some of you still have those memories. That's the type of things that you put on the form that it impacted your life.